Craig, welcome. I love the opportunity to talk to you about <laughs> Thank it. Thank <laughs> you. How did you get interested in tapping? I've been involved. I was a massage therapist. I became a chiropractor and I've been interested in all kinds of healing modalities for my whole life, really. But the funny story about how um, tapping came to me was I was skeptical at the beginning. Yeah. Um, so what happened was I Googled online EFT. I live on this little island. Anybody that could speak about that. And, and this woman I'd never seen popped up on the screen named, let's see, oh yeah, Alina Frank. <laughs> Um, for those of you that um, have already seen the interview of Alina or haven't yet, she's wonderful, and I say that because she's my wife. So, <laughs> so I invited Alina over and I said, tell me about this, this thing. I don't know anything about it other than what I've read a little bit. And she proceeded to do a demonstration with a staff person who'd been trying to quit smoking and having a lot of symptoms with that. And I was very impressed. So I said, you know, Alina, I, I'm, I'm interested. This is really fascinating. And I, we did a conversation in an interview. Um, I decided that was very interesting and I decided to train. And so I started to take some workshops with her and the transformational dialogue that began with her really transformed my life. We ended up getting married and now years later, we're teaching and training together. So how would you explain that pain can have both physical and emotional components. You know, the nice thing now um, from when I started practice is that most people really do um, have an idea that the mind and body are connected. I say, look, all you have to do is have a strong thought about something. You remember something, you're thinking about something you can't do that annoys you or, or your back pain is feeling frustrating because you can't go golf or dance. Um, and as soon as you start thinking about that, you start having feelings about that. And as soon as you start having feelings about that, your brain starts to get activated. The fight or flight response can often get activated, which means I've gone from a thought to a feeling sense to now my brain is starting to be activated my amygdala and the parts of my brain that are connected to my emotions. Now those start releasing neurotransmitters in the neurons of my brain. Now those start causing hormones and stress hormones in my body. And all of a sudden, what was some physical back pain that was stopping me from going golfing is now under more tension, more stress. And when I start to explain that connection between the thought and the feeling and then the physiological body reactions that happen like that, people get that. People understand that. Do you believe that um, every pain has an emotional issue? Mm, good question. What I would say is probably yes. Yes. Um, yes, I would. I would have to say that. Um, because as soon as we have pain, now th this, let's take this two ways. As soon as I have a pain, I have thoughts about that pain. Mm -hmm. I, I've met very few people that when they have pain are neutral about the pain. They're either frustrated that it's still there. They're angry that it happened because it's inconvenient. They feel guilty that they did something they shouldn't have done. So usually, and most of the time, as soon as pain comes on, there's some thought, feeling, thought, feeling, thought, feelings that happen like that right afterwards. I can't say 100%, but pretty darn close. Mm -hmm. Now, the other side of the question is, do negative emotions always precede pain? And I would say most of the time as well. So let's say that you are at your clinic and you start having some pain, sharp pain yourself. How you as a massage therapist, as a chiropractic, how would you approach your pain? Well, number one is the wonderful thing is as soon as I heard, I have my hands right here. I don't have to make an appointment somewhere. That is um, immediately available. But what I would say is that I probably almost always use um, an integrated approach. So I may use tapping and then I may be resting and I may use an ice pack 
And so, and then if it persists over the day, I may call my friend that's a chiropractor and say, I need to see you. How do you connect stress and pain? When we talk about stress, stress is not being in the flow, right? There's, there's some resistance to what is. That's not healthy. Mm -hmm. So what happens is as our cortisol and our stress hormones lift up from stress, and our bodies and brains are feeling like we're really in danger and really threatened. We're not, but we feel that way. And the problem is when our bodies get used to that and our brain waves get used to that and our nervous systems become accustomed to that, those elevated levels of cortisol and other neurotransmitters, what starts to happen is it affects our immune system and our immune system drops, our health starts to drop, the tension in our bodies our hearts and our muscles increase. Now we start to develop tightness, limited range of motion and pain. So when you use tapping, what happens? On an energetic, but there are many levels that things are happening on. We haven't been able to really measure energetically what's happening yet. You know, for example, we're working on a, a documentary called The Science of EFT. And I, I got to interview Donna Eden, who many of people will know is one of the world's foremost speakers on energy and she started to say what she sees in people when they start tapping and how the meridians that are very sluggish how they start to increase and how they start to be in harmony with each other and how they start to flow more evenly when we start to tap um, what we suppose is happening what research is starting to begin to point to is that when I'm either feeling something stressful What's happening is there's a part of my brain called the amygdala that's saying, you know what, this is scary. This is not safe right now. There's studies that have shown that when we stimulate acupuncture points, it starts to deactivate the amygdala. It starts to bring down the arousal in the parts of our brain that keep us in that fight or flight mode. That as I'm starting to tap, the cortisol, one of a good study started to show cortisol levels reducing as we tap starting to neutralize that amygdala part of our brain, starting to bring that fight or flight sympathetic nervous system back into balance, allowing the parasympathetic to come back into gear and bring us more into a balanced state. So for pain, is the same thing? The amygdala is related to pain? Well, remember when we're talking about pain that the feelings, just like you said, that come up with pain might be Fear. Okay. Fear that I'm not going to be able to go back to my job. Okay. I worry that I'm not going to be able to save enough for retirement if I can't do the same job. That pain associated with the negative emotions is the same as any other tapping because it gets activated when our fight or flight system gets activated, just like any other situation. Let's assume that um, I do not know energy work. So, how you're going to explain to me that you would like to try an energy approach with a person that doesn't believe on um, this kind of approach? Um, on our website, um, our kind of logo is the art and science of EFT. So we just kind of did some of the science of EFT. Okay. The art of EFT is how to bridge that gap with a person that you're trying to work with. Yeah. If they're an engineer, if they're an artist, if they're... 80 years old, if they're a teenager, right? So how we talk about it and how we bridge that yeah. gap is important. Exactly. Would you be open to trying something? It's really, it's not gonna hurt, it's gonna be very gentle. Um, and we can see in a few minutes if you think that it's gonna uh, possibly be of help. So usually, I don't have a problem with people saying no to that. Uh, Craig, you said something about um, chasing the pain. Could you explain a bit more about that? Sure. The challenge of even what we're doing right now uh -huh. is that anybody that's listening to me right now and watching this um, is looking for, you know, ideas or how can I help you, yeah. right? The problem is, is that every one of you that are out there have different ideas and different experiences and different emotions and it's unique to you. So anything that I say about pain, that pain, back pain might be connected to this or that, isn't um, specific to you. Uh -huh. However, chasing the pain is a way of working with, it's a, 
a superficial or beginning way of working with pain, which just starts off only talking about the physical symptoms. Mm -hmm. So again, even though I have this neck pain, it's just this pain in the neck and it's sharp and it's stabbing and it hurts when I tilt my head to the left, I still deeply and completely accept myself. And so we'll do a round working with that symptom. What people will often notice after that first round is I'll ask, did it change? Did it change on a zero to 10 level, what we call a suds? Did it go from a seven to a five? Mm -hmm. Did it change the feeling? Is it stabbing still or is it more aching or burning now? So we'll see if it changes. And very commonly, it'll also start to change location. Craig, um, how do you think EFT can um, really be part of the mainstream healthcare system? especially for dealing with chronic pain? Yeah, that's a good question. But I think that it happens one person at a time. You know, one very exciting thing was, again, we were working on that Science of EFT film, and we got to interview, for example, Eric Robbins, um, the urologist. And so he absolutely uses tapping, different types of tapping, to work with these women. So he's a rare one. I don't know any of their urologists, but at least there's one and he's talking about it. And we got to interview Larry Burke, who's a radiologist. He looks at x-rays and MRI, and got very interested in tapping because of claustrophobia and how to work with hypnosis and then tapping for his claustrophobic patients in those big machines, right? And then he started to see, wow, this is amazing. We certainly you know, are starting to see more acupuncturists using it, and we're seeing more massage therapists in our trainings. We've had nurses and social workers, so I can say, you know, physicians assistants that we've trained. So I see it happening. I think it doesn't happen overnight. We need to keep collecting more and more studies that are growing, but we need a lot more. And then have EFT colleagues like each of you that know how to read them or watch, you know, I make videos that simplify them. But the more that we can speak about those, the more respect we'll get in the medical circles. So just like anything else, it gains energy over time. You know, it's funny when years ago, the, the meme, the saying was, try it on everything. Yeah. I, used to, I used to laugh at that, right? Try it on everything. But what I came to realize was anything being affected by stress, by negative thoughts and emotions. So what do you have to lose? Yeah tapping on something you've got nothing to lose than you know a little bit of time and a little bit of muscular effort and um, uh, of tapping and so it's worth trying again be responsible for how you handle it but there's no reason not to try it on anything and you'll be very surprised how often you'll get some good if not great results.